We allow people to be alcoholics. We allow people to smoke cigarettes and vape. Why the fuck wouldn't we allow people to make a living on Twitch doing something novel where they use their own agency to do it? So who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? What is up guys and welcome to a new episode of I'm doing whatever the fuck I want with this channel because honestly it's a throwaway account at this point because YouTube hates me so much and I'm so damn demonetized and buried. Today we're gonna try something a little bit different. I'm gonna do kind of a short form video. It's not gonna be that long. I just got back from Hawaii. My ring light is busted so this is all natural light. This is what I'd look like if you were with me right now in 4k or Real life is real life, AK, who knows? So things are amiss. I got a stream in like 20 minutes. I have some customs to do for OnlyFans. So today we're just gonna talk about two little news stories that I heard on the Philip DeFranco show, things that like got in my britches, as things often do, and I often wanna talk about them, but then I let the moment pass and it's like two weeks later and it's not even relevant anymore. So those two topics are, first off, the Twitch streamers slash Twitch streamers that are torturing themselves online for tips. This is the abridged version. I'm gonna post a link to the Philip DeFranco show that has both of these stories in it because I'm less about perfect staunch accuracy and news and more about talking about ideas. So this guy ERBY or, or something I guess was locking himself in a closet trying to like win his mom a new car or something or some stupid shit. But if you guys haven't been on Twitch before when you're on Twitch you can kind of tip for certain things. Like you can tip to have your name on the screen or to have the streamer read the message or whatever. If you've never been on Twitch it's kind of like a live show where you get to pay the person to be a monkey essentially. By the way twitch.tv slash Tara Babcock. So anyway, there was another guy who did it as well and I guess it was like Irby's friend or something and he was charging like 25 cents to flashbang him and a bunch of other shit that would just like drive you crazy. They're basically putting themselves in a room like solitary confinement and then taking tips to subject themselves to like basically military grade torture, but not really. And everyone, including Philip DeFranco, is up in arms about this. Them willingly putting themselves in a closet and doing something that they can easily escape, not giving away their agency or anything to do so. The second guy, it was was hard to watch. I did watch a few of the clips, like freaked out, had a panic attack and started crying and ended it. And now he has to demolish his car. I think that was what was on the line. I don't know. Like I said, abridged version and very scatterbrained ADD abridged version. But a lot of people are like, oh my God, we need to not let people do this to themselves. And as you guys know, I've always been a libertarian. So like when someone says we need to not let people do things to themselves, it kind of makes me like, bro, if you want to do that for money, if you want to subject yourself to life changing torture even for money, which I don't really think this is that. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like you can leave anytime you want. You had a bad experience. Maybe have some slight trauma. Just fix it. Don't do it again. Go to a therapist. I don't know. Everyone should be going to a therapist anyway. I say as I don't take my own advice. I just don't think it's a big deal. But then again, I'm one of those people that doesn't think that it should be illegal to not wear a seatbelt because it's like a victimless crime other than yourself. It's not like a lot of people who don't wear seatbelts are getting crashes being thrown from their car onto someone else's car and then killing that person. No, it's like you're subjecting yourself to possibly more harm. Why the fuck are you forcing me and giving me tickets to do something with my own body? It bothers me. So as libertarian as I am, I don't think that anyone should be not allowed to do something even if it could potentially harm them or even factually does harm them. We allow people to be alcoholics. We allow people to smoke cigarettes and vape. Why the fuck wouldn't we allow people to make a living on Twitch doing something novel that's extremely interesting to viewers that they can stop at any time where they they use their own agency to do it. Post in the comments what you think about this because I think it's insane to be this up in arms about it when he chose to do it himself. He's probably not gonna do it again. If he does it again, that's his choice. On the other hand, from Twitch's perspective, I do think that Twitch should ban it because when I'm thinking about it from a liability perspective, it's probably not a good idea as a company to allow people to harm themselves on your platform. And I'm sure he'll be shut down by Twitch. So morally, I think he should be allowed to do whatever he wants with his body, with his stream. But if I was the business, I would definitely shut it down because I don't want the liability of someone doing something stupid and harming themselves on the stream. And if you look at the Twitch TOS, it's already against the TOS to harm yourself with drugs or alcohol or do anything, literally anything that could harm you. So this probably falls under that and he'll probably get banned if he keeps doing it. Next and last story. Okay, so it looks like California is proposing a bill or something. I don't know if it's a bill or what, who cares, that will ban cashless businesses. Oh my God. Okay, so it's that like ridiculous SJW, like super lefty argument of like, most people who would be affected by cashless businesses will be disproportionately black or Latino or something. I don't even know. Watch the video again. Abridged version. But like, while that's sad and that's like an unintended consequence, I really think that every business 
business, once again libertarian, should be allowed to decide who they do and don't cater to. So you guys know that back in the day when they were doing that gay cake thing, I definitely think that the business should be able to say no gay cakes. I don't do that. It's my business. Like what if you had to make a cake for like ISIS or something? You should be allowed to choose what offends you and what you don't do. And ergo, the market will decide that something needs to pop up that will cater to those people or the market will decide that you're not going to get any business because people don't like you anymore or because there's too many gay people that need cakes. I think that's perfectly fine. I think it works itself out. And I think when it doesn't work itself out, it's just an unnecessary consequence. Like let's say an unrealistic example, a slippery slope example, if you will, every business in LA decides to go cashless. Where will the disproportionately affected people who don't have bank accounts and credit cards go? They might have to move. They might have to commute. They might have to do something. They might have to cost themselves a little bit more money in order to go shop. On the flip side, businesses save so much money not having to use or deal with cash. They don't have to hold cash on hand. There's going to be less people trying to rob them because there's no cash there. They don't have to transport cash to and from the place. There's a lot of overhead that comes with dealing with cash. And I think it's the decision of the business whether or not they want to deal with cash. It's insane to me. Fucking crappy, shitty ass California would ever try to ban a certain type of business and how they take money. What do you guys think about this? Again, is it pulling at your heartstrings that like some people might not be able to shop there because they only carry cash? Should we stop progress of everything and change the times just for a few affected people who, by the way, when they use that fucking distinction that it's disproportionately affecting a certain race or a certain creed, it's like not on a racist level. The companies aren't sitting there thinking like, oh my God, we hate black people. So let's just do something to not cater to them. It it just happens to be that in that area, there's a lot more XYZ gender or creed or race in these certain pockets of the community. There are other things we can do to address that and to worry about that other than stifling the free speech and the free marketplace for business owners. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you would ever live in California. There are some places in California I love. San Diego is one of my favorite places in the United States that I've been to, but I could never, ever, ever, ever live in California with their policies and the, the amount that they charge and what they don't do with the homelessness. Oh my God, going to San Francisco was a trip, literally and figuratively. <laughs> there were some terrifying areas there where it's just like, shit everywhere. I saw it firsthand, needles, crazy screaming homeless people that no one does anything about that are actually potentially violent. Oh, it's a cool city otherwise, but ugh, could never live there. All right guys, I have a bunch to announce, but I'm gonna keep it for another video because I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. I hope you guys like this video, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Lots more coming your way. If you wanna actually support this channel, please do comment, like, and share the video, I don't know. And if you wanna support me monetarily and get some good, good stuff along with it, you have all the links or at least the usernames down in the description to follow and do so. I'm so good at my job. <laughs> Love you guys, have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Ah.